Hello, good morning, welcome to the Soul Indulgence Show. I'm your host, Lauren Drake, and today I want to talk to you about the unfiltered truth about tapping into your magic. So I have three pillars for you that are really important for you to know, and the foundation of it all is that you have magic inside of you. Now to prove this, I want to just start talking about our bodies. All the things that we are capable of and that we don't have to think about at all. We are able to breathe in air and take that air and filter out oxygen from carbon dioxide. And our body knows, again, without any input of ours, how to take that oxygen and and put it into our blood. And then our heart knows how to pump that blood with oxygen to every little part of our body so that every part of our body gets the magic oxygen that we need. Our body knows how to do this breathing completely, automatically. It's governed by our subconscious. And we have the power also to tap into it from our conscious mind and to slow our breath or to speed up our breath, to breathe in from our nose or our mouth or switch it up. We have these innate powers within us. We also have the magic of creation with us, right? And so whether you're born into a female body or a male body, you either were born with eggs that would later have the capacity to turn into babies or your body was born to evolve and to eventually have the magic to create sperm, which could then join with the eggs. None of that, again, is anything that you choose or you had to put effort into. It's just the literal magic that happened with your body. And we could spend all day talking about how amazing our bodies are and all of these these very real magical things that our bodies can do. And we know that, you know, barring, you know, injury or serious illness, you know, our bodies are all similarly capable of doing these things. And we are all unique, right? We all have different fingerprints, right? We all have different taste buds, right? Like we have all of this similar magic and we have all of this unique magic. And I want to talk about the uniqueness today because there's something that is foundational about how our bodies work that we often overlook. And it's this, we are powered by our dreams. When you're an infant and you see other people walking, you think, I want to do that. That looks so cool. I'm going to learn to walk. When you see other people talking or you see communication happening, you want to learn that, right? You want to learn to ride a bike. You want to learn to draw and paint. Like we see things in the world that speak to us and they are our dreams that propel us toward the next thing. Now, even though we all share so many of these in common, right? Again, Pretty much everyone has a desire when they're a baby to learn to walk and to learn to talk and they get to be unique, right? So everybody has their unique way that that is manifested, right? The unique magic and the way that that magic comes to life. I'm a coach. I wanted to be a coach. I became a coach, but I am not a coach like anyone else. Even though there's tons of other coaches, every coach has their unique way that they're doing it. We can say the same is true for doctors, right? There's just countless doctors in the world, and yet every doctor has their very unique way that they do it, or every author has their unique way, or every sports player or musician, like everyone has their unique flavor, right? So you too have this magic inside of you. And this piece, is, is the most important piece for you to know and it is often the hardest piece for you to know and I'm gonna talk about that right now because the second pillar is that you have been taught to discount 
your magic. Now, I'm not a Christian, but I believe that in the West, most of us are strongly influenced by Judeo-Christian values. And some of these values are absolutely wonderful and supportive values about doing unto others as we would have them do unto ourselves. Love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Care for the sick or the poor or the suffering. Care for the world. Like all of these are really adaptive, wonderful, loving, supportive values. But sometimes those values have been construed in ways that don't support us. And there is one very fundamental value that is taught today that I think is, is pervasive in our culture, and it's that we're all flawed. Now, I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to go back to when I was a kid. So when I was, was 14, maybe 15, I, I did go to church, and I went to summer camp. And we had this camp counselor, and she was young and fun and full of energy, and I loved just being in her presence. And she told us this story. I remember her like camp counselor name was Kian Sabe, right? She means who knows? I don't know how she got the name, but I just felt like, oh, she was so, she was so cool, and I wanted, I wanted to be like her, right? And so she told us this story, and it basically was like. If Jesus was a skateboarder, was kind of the story. And she drew, let me see if I can drop, oh, excuse me, let's see if I can drop for you here, my little camera, whooped, there we go. Okay, so she drew this half pipe, right? Are you, if you're a skateboarder, you're familiar with that, you understand that it's basically this like rampy, right, that, that goes, you can go up here and then down, whoa, again, sorry about that wasn't quite a figuring out my art skills, right? Does that, you can kind of see that, right? And so the idea was that here we are down here, flawed, imperfect, and here's God up here, and we need Jesus and the cross to like bridge this chasm, right? And I remember as a kid being so enthralled with this story. And I remember being like, I want to retell this story. I want to know all the logistics. And I kept coming to Kian Sabe and being like, will you tell me again how how far was the half pipe and, and how down below were we and, and how does the cross fall? And I, I just cared about every logistic. I wanted her to go over and over to make sure that I like really had it in my brain so that I could retell this story. And you know what piece I never questioned? I never questioned this concept that we were flawed. I never questioned this, this fact that we were over here imperfect, right? And, and I know that a lot of people have embraced like we're imperfect and that's great because then we don't have to worry about being a perfectionist. And, and I absolutely understand that and I, think true, right? That there's there's no point in, in being a perfectionist because there's also, there's no uh, perfect, right? We are all unique. There is, uh, to say that there's some like perfect ideal would, would assume that like some people have landed there, right? And that others of us haven't. But that just reinforces this, this, this phenomenon, right? That, that everyone that I have met alive in this world, who is, who is an adult, I'll say that, thinks that they're flawed. Now, where does this come from, right? I know that I just posted a question a couple days ago to my Facebook group about people who are, what their biggest fears were, right? And people easily talked about a fear of judgment, a fear of abandonment, a fear of failure. And at the core of each of those fears is a belief that somehow we're flawed. I'm so flawed that no one's going to love me and everyone's going to leave me. I'm so flawed that if I follow my dreams, I'm going to fail. I'm so flawed that other people are going to judge me on no matter what it is. And I am here to tell you in this live, and I actually believe that I'm here alive to tell you this in the whole world. Like this is the fundamental message that I want everyone to know is that you are not flawed. Sure, you have struggles and you 
are learning to overcome them, but that does not make you flawed. That does not make you damaged. Just like a child, right? If a child's learning to ride their bike, we don't say, oh my God, they're so flawed. They don't know how to ride a bike. We don't say, oh, they're so flawed. They don't know how to use scissors yet. We say, you haven't practiced. You don't know yet how to do those things. And so this piece, right, that we all have been infiltrated right, by this idea that we are imperfect and therefore we're flawed and therefore we either have to seek forgiveness or we have to uh, like compensate for that. Um, this is the fundamental problem that is wrecking our world. And if we can all learn to move into a place of trusting that we have magic in us and just understanding again with compassion those that that taught us that that we had to hide our magic or that to discount our magic right this is where the magic actually gets to come forth because the third pillar is that you alone possess the power to unleash your magic you alone can do that i spent my whole life seeking external validation, wanting a boyfriend or a partner, thinking that if I wore the right clothes, I would be accepted, thinking if I did the right drugs or drunk the right drinks, I would be accepted. And you know what? I never was. I never was. I went to lots and lots of therapy trying to feel validated and it helped. I did feel validated in some ways, but none of that ever came anywhere close to the point where I decided to go all in for me, where I decided that I was worthy and that I was gonna show up and I was gonna speak my message, right? Even this live, right? For those of you who've been watching, you know, I fumbled, right? The, the phone fell and I blocked the camera with my hands as I tried to get it up. You know, it, it's imperfect, right? And I could treat that as like, oh my God, I'm flawed and I messed up. Or I could just treat it like, oh yeah, that happened because I'm trying to get my message across that we are all worthy. We were born worthy. We were born with magic in ourselves, in our being. We were born with the capacity to tap into that and show it in our own unique expression. You have that power to unleash that for yourself. And yes, it's great to have supportive people, right? I love supporting people in helping them not only find their magic, but also, you know, let go of these layers of societal or family messages that have taught us that we are not enough, that taught us that we are wrong or flawed or that we are damaged, right? Because none of that is true. They were thoughts that you learned that were intended to keep you safe. But when you stay hidden, you are not sh learning. You're not allowing yourself to see that you can also be safe and even safer when you tap into your radiance. And so this, the path toward this, right, is soul indulgence. So many of us believe that our, we're supposed to settle, right? Our soul speaks up and says, not this, not that, I want this. And we say, oh, that's uncomfortable, hush, right? Oh, I don't think that I can do that, hush. I want to open this kind of business, but I don't know if I'm going to be successful, so hush. And that teaches our soul to, to simmer down, but it, our soul is not capable of being quiet because it is literally the only way that we work as humans is that we are attaching to our future dreams. That's what propels us forward. If you want to be in a relationship, you are compelled to try to find a person to date. If you are in a relationship and you have a conflict, you are compelled in some way to make peace with that conflict. Right? Like these are dreams. And when you follow your dreams, you teach yourself that you are worthy. You teach yourself that you are valid and magical. You teach yourself really how to love yourself. 
you know, again, like so many messages that I've heard along the years, like just love yourself, just do some self care, right? And those can feel like band-aids that never get to the core of really feeling it from the inside that you are worthy. So for anyone who's watching this, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on the replay, I want you to put it in the comments below. I have magic inside of me. I want you to type it below and I want you to say it to yourself today. I have magic inside of me. I have the only magic that only I can create inside of me. My unique combination of experiences and history and ideas and heart, like all of that manifests in a very, very specific formula that is only for you. So even though we all have these steps that we get to follow, all of these pillars, right? That there is magic inside of us, that we've been taught to discount it, and that only us possess the power to unleash that magic trusting that you have your own, very own variety, your very own brand of magic. And the world needs more magic. We need you to show us your radiance and your brilliance. So I'm Lauren. This is my message for the world. And so I hope that you'll join me. I hope in a couple weeks, I'm going to be doing a challenge where I'm going to be leading people on this process to escape mediocrity and become legendary. I hope you'll join me. It's going to be a free live event. I'll be hosting it in a special group. I, I want to bring people together because can you imagine the world that we can create if we all believe in our own magic and we all believe that we have the power to change the world because we do. And the world is begging for us to change it. It's begging to heal. It's begging for a new iteration, right? We've, we are done with 2020. We are done with the flawed uh, systems that have brought us to where we are and we are ready for a new birth. But that only happens when each unique person contributes the thing that is their calling, right? And everyone has their own unique flavor of their calling. So thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy that you're here. I'd love to hear from you. If you have a calling on your heart and you want to throw it in the comments, let us all know. Let us all support you in that. If you want to shoot it to me in a DM, I'd love to hear that way as well. Take care.